Good morning, I'm uh, Dr. Varelas. I'm a neurointensivist here at Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit, Michigan. And uh, uh, Dr. Rehman, who's a neurointensivist, uh, asked me to come and perform a brain death exam in one of our patients in the ICU. So Dr. Varelas, uh, this is Mr. X. Mr. X is a 69-year-old gentleman came in yesterday with a large left basal ganglia ICH with a lot of intraventricular blood. Last night, uh, he was noted to have a deterioration in the exam. His current exam, he is, uh, his pupils are non-reactive. He is not breathing above the vent. We thought that he met criteria for brain death, and that's why we have invited you to perform the brain death exam on him. Is he on any uh, sedatives or paralytics? No, not since last since he was intubated last night. He has not been on any sedatives for the last 12 hours. And uh, his labs, especially liver, kidney, uh, um, electrolytes, acid base, uh, are they normal or? They're completely normal except for a little hyponatremia. Sodium is 154. Okay. And uh, do you have any endocrine abnormalities also? I mean, especially thyroid or? His blood sugar has been normal. Um, his thyroid is under nor a normal level. Okay. Okay, well, um, his GCS, the Glasgow Coma Scale, you said was? Was three. He, three. Is not, he has no spontaneous motor movement, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he does not respond to any stimuli. All right. So in order to perform a brain death exam, you need to have uh, four components. Uh, one is uh, a reason for the coma. So if you have a catastrophic brain injury, like a large intracerebral hemorrhage, like this patient, in an abnormal CAT scan where you can see it, um, then uh, uh, there is a reason for the coma, and the reason for irreversible coma. So that's one. The second is the, the prerequisites. So again, before you start the brain death exam, you need to know uh, if the patient uh, uh, meets criteria uh, to proceed to the brain death exam. So for instance, what is his temperature? His temperature currently is 36.5. Okay, so based on the American Academy of Neurology, uh, brain death guidelines, the temperature should be above 36 degrees Celsius. Uh, what's his blood pressure? His blood pressure, uh, he is on liver and neosonephrine at this point. His blood pressure, along with the support of the pressure, is the 120 over, over 70 right now. It's okay. So he meets that criterion also because the blood pressure, again, according to the American Academy of Neurology guidelines, should be above 100 systolic. Uh, and he should not have any severe uh, uh, lab abnormalities like uh, uh, acid base uh, abnormalities, liver failure, uh, kidney failure, uh, endoc endocrine uh, abnormalities, um, and of course he should not be paralyzed or sedated. All right, so he meets this criteria and uh, he meets the prerequisites and will perform a brain death exam. So the first thing that you do uh, is you uncover the patient. So you can see any reflexes that he may have. And since we have the train of four here, we can uh, check him to be sure that he's not paralyzed because he was intubated. And uh, this little machine here will give him electric uh, stimuli in the ulnar nerve. Uh, and you turn it on. And it gives you four stimuli, and if the patient uh, doesn't respond that he has zero out of four, so he's, uh, 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 he's paralyzed. If the patient has uh, uh, four twitches, that means that he's not paralyzed. And as I, I saw, he has four twitches, so he's not paralyzed. All right, and as you said, there is no sedative on board. No, absolutely not. All right, then we, uh, we, can, do, uh, we can start with uh, uh, checking to see if he's responding. The stimuli should be auditory, so you have to, to yell at the patient, be sure that he, uh, he doesn't wake up, and you also need to shake him and give him pain, tactile stimuli. Uh, you said his name is Mr. X? Mr. X, yes. Mr. X, Mr. X, please wake up. Open your eyes, Mr. X, open your eyes. No response so far. Then you go and you stim give stimulus uh, here in the sternal notch. You go and you compress uh, the upper part of the sternum. You go medially and you pinch him to see if he has any reaction to pain in the upper extremities. Again, no reaction. And then you go to the lower extremities and you do the same thing, pinching medially. I don't see any reaction. 
is one of the few cases when uh, I use my hammer to uh, induce uh, nail bed pain. So you press the, the nail, and again, no reaction. And the same thing here, let's see. No reaction. And no reaction. So below the foramen magnum, before the uh, upper cervical spine, he does not have any responses. But in order to be sure that he, uh, uh, he's brain dead, you need to give him also supraorbital stimulation. So you go here to the supraorbital. And again, no reaction to the opposite side. Oop, he was got disconnected. No reaction. And then you go to the TMJ and you give pain here. And again, I don't see any reaction in the upper or lower extremities. So the conclusion is that he's in deep coma and he does not react to pain. So he's deeply comatose, GCS, Glasgow Coma Scale 3T, because he's on the machine. And now we'll proceed to examine the, the brainstem. So the first thing you, you do is to look at his pupils. With your flashlight, you'll examine the, the pupils. And the pupil is four millimeters and non-reactive. Check the other pupil, four millimeters and non-reactive. Uh, has his uh, C-spine been cleared? His C-spine has been cleared. Okay. Then we can do the so-called cervical ocular reflex when you turn his head left and right and see if he has any eye movements. Yep. Here. And I don't see any reaction. And then after that, we will proceed to do uh, the so-called uh, cold caloric, so vestibular ocular reflex. We need uh, some cold water. And in order to do that, you need to raise the bed at 30 degrees. So we put the bed at 30 degrees, and we have a syringe, 60 cc syringe filled with cold water. It has cold water. Uh, before you, you, uh, you go uh, and you inject water in the ears, has anybody looked at the ears, the tympanic membrane is they okay? They have, and uh, they're both patent. Okay, all right. It's not broken, there's no, no trauma. Does not have any... All right. So we'll do the vestibular ocular reflex, or, or the so-called cold calorics, when you inject cold water, icy water, 60 cc's, through the external auditory canal, the external ear here. You put this little uh, catheter in the ear, and then... Can you open his eyes, please? Sure. All right. So we open the eyes and we watch the eyes for movements. I'm sorry. Here. And we slowly inject water. In essence, you irrigate the, the water with uh, the, the ear with cold water. So 60 cc of cold water. And again, no reaction? No reaction. Okay. Well, we need to check the other one, but we need to wait five minutes before the, the two exams. So... I'll pass it this to you. Okay. So now five minutes have passed, and you'll inject the opposite side with cold water, and I'll be checking the eyes. Need to wait sometimes for a little bit longer period, 45 seconds to a minute, because sometimes there is a latent. Um, a late, uh, actually, uh, response of the eyes, but I don't see that. The conclusion, again, is that the uh, vestibular ocular reflex is negative. He doesn't have any eye movements. And then we proceed to do the, uh, to examine the corneals. So you take a Q-tip and you open the eye and you check, you touch the cornea. And again, there is no blink reflex, no reaction. And do the same thing on the other side. No reaction. And then you go to perform the so-called nasal tickle when you stimulate gently the nostril. And normally the patient turns the head away from the stimulus. And in this case, he does not have any reaction. Thank you. Now we'll go uh, and examine gag and cough. So in order to examine the, the gag reflex, we need to have a bit suction here. And we go with a Yankar catheter, and I don't see any reaction to suction. Or you can use a uh, tank depressor and 
you go and you stimulate the back of the throat, and again, I don't see any reaction. Thank you. And then we'll uh, suction him through the ET tube. So you take a suction tube, you disconnect him briefly from the machine, and then you put the, the suction catheter deep inside below the carina level, and you suction, and again, I don't see any coughing. So cough reflex is negative. Okay. So we concluded the clinical exam, and the next part of the, uh, of the brain death exam is to, uh, to perform an apnea test. In order to do that, we need to pre-oxygenate the patient for 10 to 15 minutes with 100% FiO2. Yep, he's 100% FiO2. Okay, and 15 minutes have already elapsed? Yep, they have. All right, so what we need to do is uh, disconnect the patient from the machine, from the ventilator, okay, and take uh, a small tube connected to 100% oxygen from the wall, uh, five to six liters, and then pass it through the ET tube down at the carina level. Okay. And then you need to watch very, very carefully for uh, respiratory movements, for breaths. So you uncover the patient and you look at him. And usually I wait for uh, uh, eight to 10 minutes before I send the first blood gas. The goal here is to allow the CO2 uh, to raise by 20 points. Is the blood pressure still okay? Above yes, 100? The blood pressure is 110 over 70. Okay. He's not taking any breath so far. Many times patients with, uh, who had catastrophic brain injuries uh, have been hyperventilated to decrease the intracranial pressure. So sometimes uh, uh, we correct the ABGs, especially the CO2 up to normal, 40 TOR, uh, before we do the apnea test. Uh, I'm not a proponent of that. I can start with lower PCO2, but it will take a little bit longer time to allow the CO2 to go up to 60 or above, which is the cutoff. So 10 minutes have lapsed. 10 minutes have lapsed. So but we'll his send blood pressure has dropped a little bit. He's at 90 systolic right now. I've been running fluids. Would you like me to start the NEO? Yes, please. We need to bring the blood pressure again up to 100 or above. Sure. The NEO has started. It's, uh, it's at 120 right now. We're titrated at 20 mics of NEO, neosinephrine. Okay, so we can draw the first ABG. I will not reconnect the patient to the ventilator. I will wait for the first ABGs to, to come back because if the PCO2 is uh, still below 60, then the, uh, the apnea test is inconclusive. So he's uh, saturating still, I see on the monitor, he's saturating uh, 95%. So we are okay. Uh, if, uh, if the saturation drops below uh, 90 and especially below 85% for more than 30 seconds, then you need to reconnect the patient and abort the procedure. But he's still above uh, 95, 90, 94, 95 now. Uh, okay, do we have the ABG results? We do. Uh, he has a pH of 7.29, mm -hmm. PCO2 of uh, 63.4, mm -hmm. and, uh, and PO2 of uh, 199. So the, uh, the PCO2 is above 60, and that concludes the apnea test, which is positive, and that concludes also the brain, stem, brain, brain death exam, which again is uh, consistent with brain death. 